Good morning. I used to do these weekly chats on a Friday and I've decided to do them on a Monday now. I think it's a better start to the week for us all to get thinking about creativity. So here I am. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about, you can maybe see behind me, I'm in the middle of experimenting and playing and exploring ideas for a new series of work. And this stage is a stage I never used to bother with. I just used to get right on with um, whatever painting I thought I needed to do. And it, it took ages to get to a result that I liked. And occasionally I would have successes and often I would have failures. And I would never know the difference between why one had happened and one hadn't. But I was always aiming to make a finished painting. And the biggest revelation to me a few years ago was the realizing, truly realizing deep down that the, the only way to make good finished paintings is to let go of the desire to make good finished paintings. And Alice and I will be talking about this on the podcast that comes out tomorrow. So I hope you'll all listen to that. But so I wanted to ask you guys, how many hours do you spend playing, just playing with paint, playing with materials? How many times do you go into your studio or workspace and think, today I'm just going to experiment and try out a few ideas? If you said all the time, then I'm going to guess that you're doing really well with your work. Because, But if you're like I used to be, then the answer will be never, because I literally never used to do that. I have this fear of wasting time. Some people have a fear of wasting paint, I know, and materials. I didn't really have that, but I had a fear of wasting time. I should be productive. I should be making work. Problem is, it doesn't work all that well. I had a feeling that I was capable of making art that was more interesting than the art that I was making, but I didn't want to go through the messy stages to get there. I didn't want to make experiments and test things out because I was too concerned with impressing, impressing myself, impressing other people. And I didn't want to hear criticism from strangers uh, on the internet, which is crazy really when you think about it, who cares what strangers think. I didn't want to see the faces of friends or family members looking at my work and not really knowing what to say. Um, and, and most of all, I didn't want to hear that critique that run runs through my head all the time that little voice just telling me that nothing I'm doing is working and that I'm not a proper artist and if I was I wouldn't make all so many failures when I finished a painting that I liked I was almost like a little kid running to say look what I've done look what I've done put it on Facebook or show it to you know family members or friends but that stopped me from moving my art forward. That desire to keep impressing everyone was get was what was keeping me stuck because I wasn't willing to go into areas that were uncomfortable. I didn't know how to make the work that I secretly wanted to make. So I knew I didn't know. So I knew if I try, I'm going to fail. So it was easier just not to try. But it's crazy, really, because in any other walk of life, we would know that in order to get good at something, we'd have to practice. But in painting, we don't. So what would happen is I, I knew I wanted to make abstract art. So I would have a go. I had absolutely no knowledge of how to do it. I would try a couple. They would be horrible. And I would think, well, obviously, you know, I'm no good at this. And then I would stop because the, the uncomfortable feeling of being no good I just would prefer to avoid it. And, but that's, you know, that's nuts because how could I be good at it on one or two tries? Making, I, I never was under the illusion that abstract painting was easy, but somehow I just felt like if I had talent, I'd be getting this right. And since I'm not getting it right, I must have no talent. And I didn't want that feeling. So I didn't go anywhere near trying. But finally, how, and I'm, I'm sharing this because now I'm surrounded by experimental pieces, ugly paintings that aren't working, 
uh, things where maybe just one little thing is an uh, interesting spark of an idea to pursue, but the rest of it's hideous. And I am not concerned at all. And how I got round it was uh, I set myself a larger goal than making a finished painting. So what was stopping me was this desire to make an impressive painting every time I came to paint, which often didn't happen, but still the desire was there. So I got around it by saying that's not my aim, but I still have an aim because I had that desire to be productive. So my aim is to uh, see what I'm capable of. My aim is to develop my own voice. This freed me up from the need for an instant result every time. Because now I have a goal, but it's a bigger goal. And I, I also stopped sharing everything that I did. In fact, I wouldn't even let my husband see most of it. I still don't when I'm in the middle of these stages. I say, no, don't come in. Because I don't want anybody else's comments to affect me negatively, but more positively. Someone says, oh, that's great. I really like what you're doing with that. That can throw you off as much as a negative comment because it can send you scurrying for more approval. So I got around it by those two things, by saying to myself, I have a goal that's larger than making one painting here. I have a big goal to become the best artist I can be. That's going to involve making a mess. And because it's going to involve making a mess, I'm not going to show people what I'm doing until I really feel ready to. And I'm going to keep it to myself. And by doing that, I started to create piles of messy, unsuccessful, unsuccessful work. But also, you start to create things that excite you. And, and the little excitement bits point the way to the next thing you should try. And you only have to follow one little step at a time. You don't have to know where you're going. In fact, you can't know where you're going. So I started following ideas and seeing where they led me and there was no stress because no one else was looking and as I did that then my work developed and my confidence grew and within a year I was in a place where I can show my work in progress I can sit in front of these scraps of paper with scribbles on them and all sorts of ideas being explored and I can genuinely not care if you think that I'm no good um, negative comments can only hurt us if we suspect they might be true. So if I said to you, you are um, a big purple monster, you would not be upset by that because you're not a big purple monster. You just think I might be a bit nuts. But if I said to you, I don't think you're a very talented artist and you secretly think maybe you're not, then that comment is really going to hurt and it's going to stay with you and you're going to wake up in the middle of the night thinking about it. But when you get to that point of confidence in the explorations that you're doing, people saying, I don't think they're very good paintings, would roll off your back as much as you're a big purple monster. And that's the point where I'm at. I have a harder time now with positive comments. As I said, I need to let those not push me what happens is you get a positive, you get some positive feedback on a piece and there's a part of your brain that wants to go, oh, make lots more of those pieces because people like that. And that's throwing you off the exploration. The, the only voice you can listen to when you're in this testing and exploring phase is your own. That's the, the intuition uh, part of your brain is all you can listen to. So once you have confidence in your own work, you don't care what some random person said on Facebook. You don't care what your husband thinks. You don't care what your friends think. You're on your own path. And that's where things get really good. And that's where things get really exciting. And that's what I want for everybody who watches my videos, listens to my podcast, reads my blog posts, takes one of my courses. I don't have one of those at the moment. But um, that's what I want for everybody. So I just thought I'd share that because I've just finished splash splashing paint around. You can see I've got it on my hands, although I did try to get washed. Um, that I have a newsletter um, which is linked above, above, below, somewhere with this video. 
So if you would like to hear from me on a weekly basis, every Sunday I send out a newsletter for artists. It's um, Sometimes it's an update on what I'm working on. Sometimes I'm sharing a struggle. Sometimes I have an idea I think might help you all. Sometimes I link to somebody else's stuff that I think is helpful. And if I've made any videos during the week or written any blog posts, I'll usually link to those as well. So it's just like a little weekly dose of art that pops in your inbox. If you'd like to receive that, just click that link and sign up and you will be added to my mailing list. That's it for me. I hope everybody's well and I will see you around. Bye.